how these machines are actually supposed to work. We have a generator that can produce 4.8 kilowatts at 3600 revolutions and a motor that uses one third of a horsepower that is only 250 watts. That's like a 19th of what the generator can produce when it's running at full speed. So technically we should be able to power 19 of these motors with what the generator can produce. With the worst possible efficiency of only 40% that still leaves 7 motors. This motor spins a flywheel that is over 90 pounds. If you ever helped someone push start a car, you know that getting the car in motion is the hardest part. Once the car is moving, it's fairly easy to maintain that speed. Same as when you used to swing on the swing set as a child. Hard to get in motion, but then it doesn't take much energy at all. And it's quite difficult to come to a full sudden stop, remember? The idea is that once the flywheel is in motion, that its kinetic energy will keep the generator moving. While the generator produces energy that then again powers the motor. Energy is lost in form of heat due to friction in the bearings, the belts, rubbing against the pulleys, and heat generating in the windings of the motor and the generator. To tear that whole generator apart, let me just answer a few questions some people have asked. I have used the so-called keyless bushing to attach the shaft to the weights. The way it works, if you tighten the screws, it will wedge down against the shaft as well as the plate. If you want to go by the book, you're supposed to tighten every screw to a specific torque. Some people also asked about this. I ran my cable just right in my aluminum track. The generator has a protection with two fuses, two 110 outlets and one 220. Quite a few people also told me to rewire my generator, so let's take a look at that. As you can see here, this generator was mass produced and maybe not as efficient as it could be. The bigger the gap between the motor and the stator, the more energy you lose. The problem is that a machine can never squeeze as much copper wiring into the stator or rotor as a hand-winded motor or generator has. If you take a closer look, you can also see the bridge rectifier diodes here. I have taken notes from the comments and I am looking for a low RPM permanent magnet generator. In order to get rid of the belts and switch to a coupling between the motor and the flywheel shaft, I have to first reposition the flywheel. I'm releasing the tension on the belts to get them off the pulleys so that I can take out the flywheel. The pulley on the motor gets replaced with a coupling. I would actually prefer to use a U-joint, but once again it's very difficult without a machine shop to go from a 5 8 shaft to a 25mm shaft. 